go. People deluded, I'm back again. I'm here with another exciting individual and promising youth prospect. Um, he's a very nice guy above all of that. Eric, let them know who you are, man. You good? Yeah, I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm just bored with the lockdown and stuff and only God knows how you feel with it. Uh, literally, bro. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to get back into everything quick. I'm just, you know, I want to go back so badly. I'm hungry. What you been doing to what you been doing to pass the time in the lockdown? Um apart from all the runs and fitness, I've literally just been chilling at home, you know, checking up on people, see if they're doing good, um, playing Fortnite, FIFA, Netflix, like there's not much I can do in it, but I'm just doing the most I can to keep active, to keep, you know, doing something. Mm -hmm. You want people? No, I'm an Xbox. Xbox I see. Seven. I knew you see. I was about to say we've got to run that, but I see you're scared. You're on <laughs> different consoles with that, my guy. <laughs> you mentioned fitness and stuff. As, as, as your club, Swansea, set you anything to do specifically, like to keep ticking over? Um, yeah, we've got certain programs that we all do, you know, um, to make sure that we're conditioned for when we come back. So, yeah, we've got programs like running and that. We've got a couple gym, like core programs, because core is like proper important. Um, but yeah, I've literally just been doing that. We've got like a couple circuits as well, so yeah, it's good. Yeah. Have you been doing have you been doing anything like technically wise off your own record? Like I don't know what you could be doing in your garden, but like just to keep Oh just yeah, yeah. I've got my own like ladders and codes and that and balls obviously. Like I just do uh, like little drills myself so I can just keep that extra bit of sharpness. Mm. But yeah, that's the only bit that I do. But... Before before we obviously started recording, we was talking obviously about how your season's gone and things like that. And you mentioned you was in good form. So how does it feel knowing that obviously we we both know no one wants this what's happening currently to happen? How does it feel that it's kind of been stopped? It's not it's it's not been injury, it's not been, you know, suspension, it's just been put to a pause. Yeah, this like this current situation's a bit mad, isn't it? Because no one saw it going this far. Like I literally thought it was gonna be a couple of weeks off when they sent us back. I was straight back into it, but yeah, man, I'm gutted because, you know, I was in good form, I was enjoying my football, like, I was in and out of 23s, you know, so, obviously, it's a thing where, you know, you just got to, you've got to keep going, and hopefully, when you come back, you just hit the ground running, you just take this time to, you know, better improve yourself, whatever, do what you need to do, look back at old clips, you know, and then just make sure that when you come, you come back, you hit the ground running, and you're just straight at it. Mm. What do you feel you was doing good this season and really excelling at in terms of, you know, you said you was in good form, but like what specifically do you think you was excelling at? Um, obviously, I was getting my confidence as well because, you know, I'm a London boy, moved to a new city and that. So mm. obviously, it's different surroundings. But yeah, I've got, I've got my confidence up. You know, I've got used to everything, like the pace of the game, breaking up everything. Um, you know, so I was just... I was just getting used to it, everything. And I was just getting in the flow that I had before when I was at Fulham. So, you know, it was just, it was good. But, you know, obviously things happen. Mm. You've kind of, we've kind of jumped the gun a bit with what you said. I don't want to expand on this. Obviously, you're, yeah. at, you're at Swansea now. You mentioned Fulham. Take me back to, you know, give me a brief overview on your, like, footballing history. When did you start kicking ball? When did you pick up an academy? And, yeah, the whole Fulham situation. Um, so, obviously, I started kicking ball when I was, like, very young, like, four or five. Mm. Obviously, at, at the time, you just, you know, you just kick ball for the fun, innit? You don't really think about anything of it. So, obviously, yeah, I kicked ball with, like, my boys in the state, you know. I used to go to some place called Brixton Rec, literally just kicked mm. ball there from, like, young. And then, when I was about, I think, eight, I think, I was, I was at Palace for a little bit. Um... Obviously, I wasn't there for long at all because, you know, I'm the nines. People literally just come and go, come and go. So I was there for, like, three months. But obviously, I enjoyed my time there, so it was all right. And then after that, I literally just, you know, kicked ball for two years. I didn't even play for no team, nothing. Like, I was at foot. I played a little bit of futsal, whatever. And then I went to a Sunday league team called Junior Elite. Mm, big team. And, yeah, like, they produce a lot of players, in it. And then at the time, yeah, there was a lot of players, whatever, good players that ended up going to academies. And then from then, I just, you know, I kicked off under 12s. Um, the chairman of Junior League, Colin, he's a coach at, he was the coach at under 18s at the time, and just said, you know what, like, 
just bring him in. So obviously I got brought in for a trial at Fulham. And then, yeah, I literally just got signed and I kicked off from there. That's where, like, the proper started. So why did you end up leaving Fulham? Because just for anyone who even Googles your name, I think you made your debut for the under-18s as a 15-year-old. You know, it looks like you're a shoe-in for a scholarship and all of these sort of things. So why, yeah. how does a London guy, specifically a South London guy, playing for a team fairly local, end up in Wales? Do you know what the mad thing is? Um, so obviously, I was playing good, man. Like, them three years that I was there, like, I just improved every year, innit? Mm. So, obviously, now it's got to under-16 now, the crunch time, whatever. Um, yeah, I was, I was playing good, you know? I was I was a leader, I was a captain there as well. So, obviously, now, when I've made my debut for the under-18s, mm. literally, I was gassed, like, oh, my days. Because it was a cup game as well. So, yeah. I was like, right. yeah, against Everton. Obviously, we lost, but like they were saying, like I was a good player or whatever, and I was, I was young as well. So, you know, um, that gave me a boost of confidence, you know. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I might get one still. Like, I've, I've got a good feeling. And then, obviously, I didn't get one now. I was guarded, man, literally. Because, you know, I was a club for so long. Doing well. Treating, yeah, like, um, I love the club. I literally... And what made it harder was the fact that I went to like their full time school, innit? Oh. And went to their full time school, I'd have to see the people that have got it every day, like the people, the full time players. So it's like, ah, oh, it was a bit mad, innit? But, you know, it, it was, it was shitty. How do, you, how do you deal with the setbacks? Because it's like, obviously, you said it's got in, and you know, you can either go two ways. You can, as sad as it is, you can feel sorry for yourself and nothing changes, or at some point, you've got to suck it up. So, how did you like get back on it and eventually what fell into place for Swansea? Um, literally, I just, you know, I just kept, like, kept trying, you know. Um, it's just a matter of believing in your ability, trusting your ability, because, you know, you, you may have got wherever you are, but you wouldn't have got there without your ability for not good mm -hmm. enough. So, you know, you just got to trust, it, have confidence in yourself and just, you know, use the support around you to, to, to boost you. I'm saying that's what i done. And obviously the Sonji move came by after. Uh, Sonji move was hard to get as well. That was very long, that process. But yeah, it was good. What took you back? What, was, you any, was there any other clubs interested in you in, in addition to Sonji? Uh, literally, my phone would not stop ringing. <laughs> but the maddest thing is, literally... I didn't get offered anywhere else. That's the mad thing. Literally, I got rejected so many times. That's what a lot of people don't understand. After Fulham, it was like a mad hard time because I went, I went everywhere. I went Sheffield, didn't get a scholar. I went Bournemouth, didn't get a scholar. Um, Leicester, I was going to get a scholar, but then someone, someone new came in the next week. Uh, they invited me back in, and it was like, nah, I'll take it back. There was QPR. And literally, Swansea was like one of the last clubs. After that, obviously, because people talk in it. So when you're not getting rejected by this club, mm. the other club thinking, well, if he's getting rejected by them, like, why are we going to bring him in? So, mm. so the clubs were just losing interest, in it? But obviously, um, one guy at Fulham, like the head scout, Malcolm Elias, was like, nah, like, you need to go to Swansea. Because Swansea was one of the first. But obviously, I wanted to go a bit more local before I go all the way to Wales. Mm. So... Uh, Malcolm was like, yeah, so Malcolm was like, yeah, just get to Sondi. Like, I know people there, it's a good club. And I went there and literally everything just went well. So I'm just, I'm happy and grateful for that, to be honest. Yeah, man, because you've had a good seat. Like, you've carried on where you've left on in Fulham and playing years up. I've seen you've made your 23s debut. What was the toughest thing to deal with? Um, or what better yet, what shocked you becoming a first-year scholar? Was it the pace of the game, physically, you know, training and playing like multiple times a week? The whole, you know, everybody's at different age, um, physically rates and stuff like that. What kind of, what took you back? Took you back since you've been coming for a first time footballer, first full time footballer. Sorry. Um, probably say um, the pace. The pace of the game is a lot more faster than the sixteen. You know, and like the fitness as well. Like fitness is very, very, very important mm. because if you're fit, it, it makes sure that like throughout the whole game, you know, you can be active, you can be do something, you know. Even if you're not you might not be playing well, but as long as you're fit and you're working hard, you can make you can make some sort of impact in the game. So whenever I play, I just try to bring that extra, you know, bit of intensity because it pushes me and it pushes the whole team to play better. So I'd say 
you have to be like a lot more fitter and you've got to think smarter in here like in your head as well because you ain't got a lot of time so decision making has to be quick and it has to be effective for you to be effective on the pitch. I think That's I didn't even I, I did sorry, I didn't specify this but it's just hit me. What position do you play? I know where you play, you're a midfielder, but just because right. we've been talking and we haven't been specific. Yeah, I think CDM, well, I can play um, just like centre mid as well, like box to box, but yeah, mainly CDM. Has that always been you? The man thing, um, actually, nah, when I first trained Fulham, literally, I was everywhere, boy. I was absolutely <laughs> everywhere. Like, obviously, you're young in it, so you're just testing different Energy positions. I was, yeah, so I was literally, I went, I just went further and further down the pitch, the man thing is, because I came in, I was a winger. And then I had a little spell at striker, and I just dropped down, dropped down, dropped down, even right back, centre back. I played everywhere literally. But now I've just solidified my face in centre mid. I literally just like it. It's the best. Isn't it? And I forgot to ask you, but earlier you said you wasn't playing, and you actually wasn't playing for a team for a couple of years. That's a that's a fantastic story because you you know you've played for Fulham. Um, at the time you played for Fulham, you're not Swansea, but you spent periods out of the game. Why wasn't you playing like any sort of league structure football beyond with your mates in that? I don't even know. Like I actually don't know because I literally just you know throughout them couple of years that I had before I went to junior league, I literally just played with my mates like on their day, you know, um, had a little bit of footsie training. Because like my dad knew someone who done it, um, played in a part like it wasn't really. I didn't really, you know, I weren't really thinking about academies too tough. I was just enjoying it. Like mm. obviously, if it came through, it came through. But like I never forced it. I just wanted to enjoy my football, you know. That makes so, sense. Yeah. Man. Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought I cut you off. Sorry, man. No, no. Um, I wanted to ask you another question. Is there any reference, because you said you're a def de defensive middle box to box. Obviously, I'm not saying you idolise players or you try and be exactly like players, but is there reference points in Swan? Well, in general, do you have football in reference points? And is there like somebody in the older years at Swansea or in the first team you look at like, oh, I need to kind of do what he's doing or take little bits and pieces and add it to my thing? Um, cool. So if you were talking about outside Swansea, like world-class players, Mm. Two I would try and base my, my game around would be off the ball Kante because this guy mm. ridiculous. Off the ball Kante with like the energy, the tenacity to win the ball back, you know, just active. But then on the ball, like Busquets, you know, just calm, just gets the ball, you know, breaks lines, you know, just calm. I like I like I like I love the way the two play. I watch them all the time. And if he was into reference the first team now, or like people in and around the first team, I'd say um, first team player um, Matt Grimes, mm, good, good as well, good, mm. good, good player, like nice left foot, technical, works hard. But in and around the first team, um, Jack Evans, mm. he's a bit old to me, but he's a uh, mate, he's one of the best I've played with to be honest, Jack, mm. baller. Mm. God. Two good, very good guys. A very good way to answer them questions, my guy, man. That's two very good reference points. Have you been exposed to training with the first team yet, in and around them? Um, no, nah, not yet, to be honest. I've literally just been in and out with 23s, to be honest. A couple of my teammates have as well, but that's good. But like, I haven't had my chance yet, but that's fine. Because um, I made it up. Um, it's cool. How, how, how confident are you like in, in Swansea in general? Because it must be encouraging knowing that, you know, at first team level, they've got a couple of young players on loan, a couple of young players that have actually come through the academy, they're all playing. Looking down the pyramid, obviously, you've come in, you're playing at 23s here and there, and you're making progress and a lot of other players. So youth is very much at the forefront and it's all the buzzword in today's day and age, but it's rarely ever done. Yeah, no, they like to, they like to like, now, nowadays, they like to throw around youth a lot, but there's, there's not a lot of teams doing it. So when I see Swansea doing it, I'm like, yeah, like, I've got a chance because they've got, like, the manager in, like, I like Steve. I've had a couple of conversations with him, you know. He's, like, he's a good guy. So I know that he's trusting your players. He's brought players on loan as well, like Ryan Brewster, Mark Gahey. And, yeah, so when I see, like, young squad, like, it's encouraging because it makes you want to work harder. Like, even one of my close friends, Kiv, made his debut, like, this year as well, or last, no, last year, sorry. So it's like, it's really encouraging. It's good because he really has faith in, you know, in us young boys. And you just think that, like, oh, 
if you're good, if you if you're good enough, you're old enough. You know what I mean? So it's good. Mm-hmm. Obviously, off the field is it, off the field is irrelevant because I know you you're a focused lad. You know football. The end goal is being an outright <laughs> professional footballer, Premier League footballer by God's grace. But it's like obviously moving from London, young lad, moving from London to Swansea. I haven't been to Swansea, but I know it's two different <laughs> places. Like how how did you adapt to it? What's your first thoughts? And like just how different is it? Paint a bit of a picture for me, man. At first, it wasn't even that bad, you know, because I was just, I'm not saying I'm not focused now, but I was just, you know, I wanted to get in to prove a lot of people wrong. So I was amazing. just, you know, proper, go there, train hard, you know, do my thing after training, just go home, relax, sleep, whatever. But after, as the season goes on, you realise how mad it is, like, Swansea is so quiet, bro, like, I promise you. <laughs> like, if you want to go there, retire and chill with your wife for the, for the last couple of years you have, you know, that's the place to go because it's so quiet. But, you know, it's, it's a good town. Like, it's, it gives you that tunnel vision to focus on what you need to focus on. Landing that, there's a lot of distractions, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, so, obviously, it's, it's good that I'm there as well. Just focus on what I need to do. But it's like, it's crazy difference, man. Crazy. Especially transport as well. Ah, oh, transport's terrible, man. It was the transport yeah. like? Ah, oh, man. I literally, one time I was literally going to my friend's house because it was his birthday, he was going to a barbecue. Um, literally, I've gone to the, the bus stop. <laughs> I've gone to the bus stop now and I'm checking, I'm like, checking to see when the bus is coming or whatever. And I'm, as, I have an app that shows that like, when it's coming, like, live track something. Yeah. So I'm thinking, mad. It seems right next to the thing. And I'm like, no, like, where is it? And it literally just hit, it went past me. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> so literally, transport is, transport is terrible, literally. <laughs> but it is. Oh, man. Is there any other London lads in and around the, like your age in the first team and, well, first year scholars, sorry, and second year scholars and things? Um, there's, yeah, there's one lad, Rio Campbell. Mm. From Watford. He's, he's another London lad. Um, there's a couple from now. Nah, we're the only London lads. There's a couple from that like, Birmingham and that, but you know, there's not really no London lads. Just us two. Do you more like obviously you probably you talk to all teammates, but do you find yourself oh, yeah. gravitating towards the Londoners and Birmingham a lot more? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're just you know, I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean, of course. Like. <laughs> It makes sense. It, it makes sense. You go to the games on a regular basis, like first team level and stuff. Yeah, they said that. Normally, um, so we, they have a game weekly, obviously, and obviously we have a game on Saturdays. They say they make a compulsory. You have to go to the games if they're on a week on a weekend. So mm. after that, after our game, whatever, we have to go straight to their game, or for on Sunday, you have to go. But yeah, we go often. But it's good in it because it gives you that, you know. You watch the, your first team, you see who's in your position, you get a bit of analysing in. And if you're unlucky as well, you, you go in the in their change room and you've got to clean up after them as well. That's mad. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, literally, you just have to watch the game as well. Yeah, but it's good, man. It's good. I don't mind it. Mm. Did, at the start of this season, did you set yourself any targets or goals or accomplishments in particular? Um, what goals I set? Yeah, I literally just said, Myself to you know just make sure us I, I start majority of the games, you know. Um, what else? To being in around twenty three is made by twenty three's debut. That's that's pretty much it. I really didn't have many other goals for this apart from that. How did you feel? Obviously, because you hit like obviously you you hit that with you obviously want to hit it as quickly as possible, but. You know, you've done it very quickly. How did it feel to kind of hit that mid-early season sort of thing? Literally, I did not think I'd do it so early because at the time, I'm just, uh, like, everything just flew into place because, you know, um, this year was lucky because there was a lot of, a lot of um, park for it, I'd say. Mm. Because, um, like, we lost a lot of players. I don't know. I don't know how, but we lost a lot of players. So in the twenty threes, there's not many players, and then on the first team as well. So obviously, I hit it very early. I was I was gassed because I think it was literally um, through. I think Jack had two new red cards, and he just said, you know, just fill in, and I played well as well. So yeah, I was I was happy about that. But yeah, it was good. I didn't think I'd hit it so early because normally. Our 23s are good. We've got decent players, you know. 
So obviously, I didn't think I'd hit so early, but I'm, I'm happy I did. What would you say are your <laughs> biggest? Sorry, bro, carry on. No, I just said it just gave me that taste, didn't it? It makes sense. Uh, what would you say your biggest strength? If you had to pick a biggest strength of yours and something you need to work on as a footballer, what would you say? My biggest strength would be, you know, um, probably breaking up play, you know, being tenacious, winning the ball back, and, and, my, long, and my passing as well. It's decent. Um, if I'd have to work on something, I'd say probably my weaker foot and my fitness because fit like the way I want to play, I, I I make myself like want to play like Kante. So obviously, and for me to do that, I need to be as fit as possible. You know what I mean? I need to be like, active in the pitch for eighty minutes. You know, mm. so obviously I need to work on my fitness to make sure that I can do that and be effective for like, the whole ninety minutes. Hopefully. Is there has there been any games? Because you said you we like we spoke off of uh, you felt you was in good form in this season. And, you know, yeah. it's sad that it's ended. It, was there ever a game where you? Is there a game in particular where you thought you know what today I've been unplayable? That like you've clocked in the game you're playing mad. And equally, has there been any time in your career where there's been a tough game where you think you know I've played that game, it's been quite tough for me. Um, the game where I played like badly would be my first game back from injury. Um, Leicester, Leicester home. I think we lost that five one. But um, yeah, that all Southampton away to second game. But yeah, when we come back from injury, I came up from a long injury, um, and then literally just got thrown straight in the team. So obviously now, obviously I was injured for so long. Everyone's just like a step ahead of me because mm. I've I've lost that fitness that I've had. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, the game was just was not it. Like I wasn't, you know, I wasn't the same. I wasn't sharp, whatever. And I was literally just like a step behind everyone. So yeah, that game, and a game where I've been unplayable. Um, well, not even necessarily unplayable. You just felt, you know, I've done well. Yeah. Um, probably say West Brom. I'm take West Brom. Put in a very good performance there. Um, what else would be? Oh, Southampton as well. Southampton in the Premier League Cup as well. Why did that one go games. well? I don't know. You know, I, I literally, the whole team played well on this. Like, Southampton, no disrespect to them, but, you know, them man, <laughs> we, <laughs> we did take that game still, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, um, I got on the ball a lot, you know, spray passes, won the ball. Like, I just done what I do best. So, yeah, that game was a, a very good game, to be honest. Very, very good game. You I'm happy about that. You mentioned, sorry, bro, you mentioned injuries. Now, I think it's a big thing to talk about stuff because in your short career, I'm proud of you because you've shown great resilience. You've come back from release, you've come back from injury and, you know, you're making progress. What injury did you have? And how long was you out for? Um, I had, I was out for two months and I had the, like, like, um, what was it? Like little tears. So I had tears everywhere. I had a little tear in my MCL, ACL, PCL. Yeah, it's mad. Wow. I literally I sh shattered like my bones, my knee. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Because um, literally preseason basically was done in it. Everyone was fit, whatever, and it was a preseason game. And I've literally the guys lost the lost. No, we've lost the ball. The guy's turned and he starts driving. I've literally, as soon as he, we've lost it, I'm sprinting at him. And I've literally gone in. And you know when you both kick a ball, the ball just goes, boom. Yeah. Like, bam. Obviously, I've won the ball. I've come out with it. I literally just passed it. And then I knew. I knew I'd done that. And I had that, ah. Oh. I started limping, whatever. But it was cool, innit? At the time, you're filled with adrenaline. So you don't really, mm. you don't really feel it. I literally yeah. played the rest of the game. I played the rest of the game literally like that. And I was like, playing normally. But then as soon as I, the game finished, it literally just hit me like that. So obviously I went for a scan now, and then they just said I'd done all of that, and I was like, mad. What did that make you feel? I was, God, I was like, oh, like my first season in, you know, like I didn't even play the game yet. Like, I was, I was guarded, man. I was like, ah, oh, but you know, I just need to come back stronger. And I've never been injured before in it, by God's grace. So when that hit me, I was just like, oh, it's crazy, man. I hate being on the sidelines, man. Do you think? Do you think in a in a weird way? I wouldn't say it's a blessing in disguise because obviously yeah. it's, it's your help. Yeah, I know it helps you long term. Like it goes from yeah, twenty six for good. 
because you don't neglect all the things that you have in it when you're there because you know when you're doing injury prevention or whatever you know all the ballers like they're just like oh this is long or whatever but mm. now it makes you really understand why you do things such as you know injury prevention gym it just makes you want to like cherish essentially when you're out on the pitch because it is a blessing you know mm. so obviously yeah it just made me come back stronger work harder to make sure when I'm on the pitch I just enjoy it as much as I can do you think like it's helped you understand your body a bit more? Because obviously you're 16 now. I'm pretty sure you you look back at sometimes a t- couple of years ago and you think, oh, I was better at this, but I'm a bit more I'm a bit more at this now. And probably you say the same at 18 and 21, etc. Does did it kind of help you understand your body? How you might have to tailor your game? How you might have to do things differently? Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it did because you know when that injury came, like came, it just made me wanna like come back stronger. Obviously now. Um, yeah, it did make me want to tell him body because, you know, I just, I wanted, I don't even know, man. I don't even know what to say to one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is it, how tough was it psychologically, man? Because, you know, the physical wounds will heal. It's all about mentally. I know when I've had injuries, I've been I've been phys- physically well, but I've been kind of shook to pass the ball. I don't want to get hurt again and things like that. How, yeah, you know? after, oh, my gosh, like, obviously, I've done my rehab now, whatever, but I could still feel it a bit. Like, I had to wear tape on my knee as well, but I could still feel it when I pass. I, couldn't, I didn't want to really punch in too tough mm. because I'm like, mad. Like, if this goes again... You know, I could get having surgery in it. So I was just like, nah, you know, I'm going to take it slow. So it is hard, but you know, but you just got to, I don't know, like you got to work through it sort of thing, but not alone. You got to make sure that, you know, we have something called wellness tests. Like every morning you've got to report in to see and like score your body sort of thing, like the things in your body. So obviously I just was honest as possible because I didn't want to risk anything happen, like, happening again. So I was just, you know, made sure that, I talked to my physios, I asked my like sports sciences coach if I could do any exercises to make it stronger. So he's literally just you know working through it. That's 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 what I can say to him. Mm, that makes sense. How I, I mean that's the first I've heard about that, the the well prevention thing and rating your stuff. Like, what what is that actually like specifically? Because that's I'm interested to know about it. Uh, so basically it's like um we have an app PMA, yeah. Like oh, I forgot what it stands for, but like a Premier League app. And then they're like it's a wellness test where you just they ask you questions in it and then you've got a rate from one to five one obviously being pain free or whatever and then five being sore or whatever and then they just ask questions about like like if you're feeling how you feeling mentally how you feeling um physically are you tired have you had how much hours sleep have you had um and then like are you like, do you feel any injuries or you saw you tight or anywhere? And yeah, that's basically it. You got to do that every morning, I think. Yeah, every like morning. Every, yeah. every morning, like literally every yeah. morning. Is that when yeah, you're regardless when of the injury or not? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a just to, make, yeah, just to make sure that, you know, like everyone's fine in it before they have the meet and brief about um, training or whatever they have planned for the day. Mm. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. How does it work? Like, how does a typical? Because I, I kind of know, but I don't like. Obviously, you're 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 a Swansea player. What well, talk us through the day? Like, do you drive in? Is it you drive in? You do one morning session and that's it for the day, or do you come back and do double sessions? How does it work? So, um, normally, um, you either drive in or you get picked up by the driver, and then uh, obviously you have breakfast around eight thirty. Um, then obviously eight eight thirty to nine thirty breakfast. You got gym, gym every morning, um, and then you have a quick meeting before that to go whatever like over maybe the game a bit a couple of clips of the game that we're gonna use to improve on for today's mm. session or like the session brief. And then from that from like ten or whatever ten thirty to like eleven thirty training obviously then lunch at 12 for, like so it gives you enough time to shower or whatever and then um yeah you either have like it it, 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 diff, it differs because sometimes we have um like individual sessions like everyone has a different schedule some days so mm. like, on monday it could be oh i'm having an idp session so i'm having an extra session with a couple other people with one of the coaches obviously um, that depends on what your targets are, like what you want to improve on. So you can be in a 
like a defensive route who, let's say, is heading the ball. So you do whatever you need to do with them. You can be an attacking group, like finishing or whatever. Mm. So, yeah, just the first. And then another day I could be um, doing analysis on my, my games, making clips, whatever. And then the other day I could be doing gym, psychology. Like It, de- it depends. It, de- it differs every day. But yeah, that's... And sometimes you have double sessions as well, obviously, if like there's no game or whatever. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it, to be honest. You mentioned analysis. How often do you like watch your own games, like draw up little clips and all of that sort of stuff? Uh, I was thinking, especially in quarantine now, I've literally just been watching my games training because, you know, I'm missing the game properly. So yeah, I literally watch my games often, you know, to think like, how could I have done better there? Like when I, when I was there, we watched, get, like, I literally, Every Tuesday, I went over all my clips from, from the game. I looked how much I ran because, you know, like they have me quite on a not strict thing, but like they really want me to push because they, like, they see the potential. So I have a meeting with one of the coaches like 15 minutes before training and you should talk about the game and talk about like how much I ran, whatever, and what I need to do to, to get to that next level. Mm. I'm a bit jealous of you because you're a South Londoner. And I'm from North, and I don't see none of our our North man really. They, I know they're about, but it's like you lot are the flag bearers. You got Jaden, Sanjo, and Nelson, and Eddie, and at, at every club, yourself included, there's somebody in it. What is it in the water with you guys, man? Like, well, why is it? That you I don't just... even know. You know, I I genuinely don't know. I think it's just it's just what it is, like because we all grew up in that cage football sort of vibe. You know, the close tech whatever that everyone's growing up in but I don't even know what it is with South London you know I just I think it's just I actually don't know yeah. it's produced play, literally yeah, I'm mad jealous man because it's like I mean what, what part of South are you from Brixton right yeah I used to be from I used to live in Tulse Hill and then I moved to um, like Wimbledon See, even them sort of size there, even looking at Arsenal's academy, every time I watch Arsenal, a bag of South London is in the academy. It's not someone <laughs> from, 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 from actually Tottenham or Edmonton or things like that, man. It's, it's yeah, quite sad. I wanted to ask you as well, what countries are you eligible for in terms of international? Um, England and Cameroon. Mm. Did you ever yeah, play for Cameroon? No, I haven't. I've got pulled up for England on standby like once, but this was ages ago this was like under 15 I think but after that I never heard from him again but Cameroon nah I've never heard from him before would you ever would you ever play for Cameroon I mean uh, I wouldn't mind to be honest because it's just it's international isn't it so I wouldn't mind playing for my country you know? what was it like playing well being on standby for England at under 15s because I assume you went on trial had to join some sort of team training thing before they said that yeah, so I don't know. I think I was in that eye because at the time I was playing well, and obviously my team was ah uh, my team at back up for them was good, man. Like proper good. Our team, I think our team was one of the best. It was me, Harvey Elliott, Marley Francois, Raf, Garcia, a lot of good players. Kevon Williams. So obviously the, our team was good, and and at that time a lot of us got like got called up, like got little call ups as well. So I thought I was gonna go, but I didn't go. But yeah, it was it was good that I got selected. They showed that I was doing something right. But obviously, mm. I didn't go. But it was still all right. And I didn't really mind. It's time I was still young. That's good, man. I like the way you, the way you come across. You're very resilient, and you always think of you know, okay, I might have gone through this, but what's the good side? What's the benefit to this? What would you say finally to wrap this up? I'd like to ask you. I, it could be anything, but what do you think is the biggest, strongest asset you need to make it as a professional footballer? Um, say. Just that that drive, because you need you need that drive to to be resilient, you know, to be mentally strong, to make sure that you know if any setbacks happen, you have that drive to push over, or you know, you just make sure you keep that drive because that inner drive keeps you going, and it keeps you motivated to to better yourself as a person and the footballer as well. So if you have that drive, like it's it's, it's so important and it can take you very far. Mm. I like off that topic, yeah. Final question. I, I always ask footballers this. Obviously, coming from this sort of environment we come from, and not to you know use it as a stick to beat any players. Do you feel yeah. when you're training and you're playing and stuff? Obviously, you want to be a footballer, anyways. Obviously, you want to be successful, anyways. But do you find that you're a bit hungrier than them purely because coming from what we're coming from, there might not be the biggest of options or the most opportunity sort of thing. Yeah, because you know we come from a place where you know it's either 
like football or you know so other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, because you know that you've chosen this path, you've got to make sure that you take it with both hands because there's a lot of people who come from where we come from who want to be in your position, and you know a lot of people as well that are back in your in the end essentially. Uh, just chilling, doing nothing, you know. So you've got it gives you that extra, that extra hunger to make sure that you know you make it out of these ends. You make your parents proud or whatever, and it just yeah it gives you that extra hunger because you know that you know like you 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 haven't had it easy to to get to where you are. Uh, so yeah, I'd say I'd say so. I'd agree with what you said about us being more a bit more hungry. Yeah. Uh. I would love this interview, my guy, Eric, man. I'd love to do this, you know, whenever we're back playing football and track your progress and things. Once again, thank you for coming through and sharing your time with me, my guy. No worries, bro. Anytime, literally. Like, I appreciate it, you know. It's good to get my story out there as well. But, yeah, thank you for having me, man. No worries, man. Take care of yourself. Yeah, take care, bro.